good evening so up till now we covered patterns so let us move on to other ip rights today let us look at trademarks so what do you understand by trademark any one of you what do you understand by trademark sign unique sign of ha ah, but unique sign of what pardon okay so what it does to you you have a unique sign for your business so what does it does to your business why you are having unique sign is recognized okay what else copy okay what does this represent to you what do these signs represent to you footwear so all of them are footwear basically they belong to different manufacturer isn't it so trademark is a sign that individualizes the goods of a given enterprise and distinguishes them from the goods of its competitors barta is not same as rebook rebook is not same as sketcher so although all of them represent footwear but that sign enables you to distinguish between a bata product and a sketcher product let us start two main characteristics one it has to be distinctive second it should not be deceptive what does this mean that name or a sign is distinctive from the product apple has nothing to do with computer they are very distinct from that product there is no correlation between the word apple and the computer as a product but when you apply apple for the apple no distinction it is descriptive it describes you the nature of good so you know it is a fruit and we say deceptiveness it should not be deceptive it should not claim the quality of the goods which does not have other day we talked about texmati for the rice when you use texmati for the rice it gives you some impression that it is a basmati rice isn't it but texmati is not basmati rice the rice being sold by a texas based company called rice tech they are calling it as a texas there is a deception as a consumer you believe that it will be worth the trademark should not be deceptive what are the functions of trademark one he said it recognizes indicate the source of origin of goods or services so you know these goods or services are coming from a particular manufacturer or particular service provider it helps you the guarantee the quality of goods bearing that mark so you know a sketcher has a particular quality godrej has a particular quality and because of that quality are certain attributes you want to buy that you go to the market and demand for that product you say i want pure soap the fellow gives you a moti soap you are not going to accept it you want a pure soap so you are demanding peers so that creates demand for the product and then that is used as a marketing tool to build the brands and then you create a brand value and that brand value also has a monetary value for the company 
So these are the basically functions of the trademark. Therefore, you keep the trademarks. So what constitutes a trademark? It may consist of a words, certain design, some letters, numerals, or a packaging, some slogan, some devices, symbols, etc. We will see each of those examples. And there is a service mark. What is a service mark? Service mark is nothing but a trademark which is applied to a service. India Post runs a courier service. They call it as a speed post. So, a speed post is a service mark. American Express has a money transfer scheme. They call it as a money gram. So, money gram is a service mark. So, the hologram mark. Lot of documents you will see or even products with a hologram, which is very unique, specific to them. Sound mark, advertisement jingles, famous film company, what is that? MGM Studios, the lion roaring, that is a trademark. Shape is a trademark. Coca Cola bottle, those ridges, a trademark. Scent as a trademark, which will be sent addition to the trademark. SH Kelker and Company have a scent trademark as Lata Mangeshkar. So, what are those examples? Let us look at words Apple for computers, Jewish bank for bank. Arbitrary are some fancy word designation, Coca Cola, Nikon, Sony, Nike. There is no meaning at all. These words have no meaning, they are arbitrary. Then you have names, family names, Henry Ford, so Ford, Puget, Hilton, Hilton for the hotel, it is a family name. Slogan, fly me for an airline. LNT says it is imaginary. Infosys says powered by intellect, driven by the values. Devices, the star for Mercedes Benz or the flying lady for Rolls Royce. These are devices, they are all trademarked. You can't use that star anywhere else. Numbers, 4711 Cologne. Or triple five for cigarettes. Letters GM, SEAT, VW, KLM, CM, IT. Actually, all these are abbreviated today. GM stands for General Motors, VW is for Volkswagen, 3M is originally Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. They are no longer in mining, they abbreviated their name as 3M. ITC. Indian Tobacco Company mainly into the cigarette making, but today it is mainly into the food processing, agri processing. So, they have abbreviated the name to ITC. So, number of such company names you will find, which are the full names, they don't got abbreviated, and those abbreviations are the trademark itself. Pictures are symbols. Lacoste, that small crocodile, or apparel, or footwear. All these are examples of those trademarks. See what happens? A trademark creates a mental association amongst us as the consumers, and then we tend to believe that those products which come from them have certain unique features, they come from a unique source, and there are, we associate. We sometimes associate quality or many other features. This association is referred as secondary meaning and the basis for creating a trademark. I will give you an interesting example of a secondary meaning. In a publicly funded institutions, you can't buy anything without competitive bidding. You need to at least have three quotations and give order to the lowest person. You can't break this rule. 
we were setting up human resource development center and the director of that institute said I want to buy a quality furniture number one quality furniture and he said Godrej is an excellent furniture. He went to Godrej, negotiated, got the whole furniture without competitive bidding. Serious audit objection. How can you do this? The audit objection remained on the book for three years. Finally, it was escalated. Who were the senior person in control of the general's office? Finally, let us off. You know what was his reason for letting us off? He said, Godrej is an ethical company. I don't think Godrej would have bribed somebody. And the fact that you directly purchased from the Godrej, I assume there are no malafides. There is a procedural lapse, but I don't assume there are malafides because Godrej is an ethical company. So, ethics and Godrej got associated. There is a secondary meaning there. A very interesting case. The reason in a government system, CAG lets you off on that person's <coughs> belief that Godre is an ethical company, it will not drive anything. Same thing can be said for Tata, can be said for Premji, for Wipro. People have those kind of ethics and people believe that. It can be quality, it can be ethics, it can be anything. Service. We are talking about a trademark, there is also a concept of a trade name. Trade name refers to the corporate partnership or other form of business. A business which operates under a trade name and markets number of goods and services under one or more trademarks or service marks. You are Tata, you have a trade name. And a Tata, you have Tata Motors. In Tata Motors, a number of vehicles, and each vehicle is Named differently, there is an Indica, Tagore, I don't know, number of brands they have, Safari and all that. All those are trademarks. The Unilever sells soaps. So, your Life Boy, your Pierce, your Lux, your detergent, surf, wheel, whatever not. So, it is a business is under the trade name of a Unilever, but markets a number of trademarks and services. And the trade name can also function as a trademark. So, Tata itself is a trademark. Unilever itself is a trademark. But you still have number of other trademarks under that. So, the trade name Tata or Unilever. Then there are other marks. One is called collective mark, other is called certification mark. Collective mark is used by an association of people. There is an international wool association and they have a mark called wool mark. Only the members of that association can use that mark. Obviously, they have to maintain certain norms of the association. So, that is called a wool mark. But there is also a certification mark. Certification mark is normally by some standard setting bodies. Like in India, ISI, Bureau of Indian Standards has AGMAR for food products. So, if you meet those quality standards which are defined, you can use AGMAR. So, anybody who meets can get an AGMAR. So, in the case of wool mark, you have to be member of that association, but the associations own that mark. This is a concept of a well known marks. See, these trademarks are registered under different categories for the goods. It can be for the food products, it can be for beverages, it can be for leather goods, it can be for furniture. So, each category is there. But certain names have become so well known across the world, trans border reputation, what we call it, so that any time you use that name, people will think the goods are coming from that source. <coughs> Irrespective whether they have registered a trademark in particular category or not, or whether they are producing that goods or services or not. 
anybody says this is Tata product, he will say it is coming from house of Tata. So, public believes that indication is coming from that source. The famous case of a Kumar enterprise, they were producing pressure cooker and selling under the trademark of Philips. Philips went and sued them. Kumar enterprise said, look, Philips does not make pressure cooker. So, we are not affecting their economic interest. They are not in that market at all. So, Philips is unaffected party. So, Philips said look, we are a well known mark worldwide. The moment you use the word Philips, every customer will assume that it is coming from us and it affects our reputation. The quality is not be a mark, not our product. We are not responsible for service or anything, warranties. So, it is affecting our business. So, you cannot use well known marks. Most of the countries do not have a specific mention of well mark in their trademark act, but few years ago we have issued special guidelines for well known mark. What can constitute a well known mark? Like today you look at Tata, they have transported reputation, they have been selling trucks in Africa for now. 50, 60 years. They may not be selling everything in Africa, but their reputation. When you say Sony, internationally people know them for consumer electronics. So, all these constitute well known mark. Let us look at how strong the strength of those marks is. It has been found out that arbitrary or fanciful marks or names have its highest strength. When you say Kodak for films, Kodak and film have no connection. The word Kodak does not represent film, photography or anything. Or camel for cigarettes. Camel is an animal, has nothing to do with cigarettes. But such arbitrary names have the highest strength. And when then there are other marks called suggestive marks, roach box, it suggests you that it has something to do with cockroach. So, when you use it for insect traps, the name is suggestive of what it is. Descriptive mark, frosted flakes, frosted is. Once you say frosted flakes, you think of a cornflake, something like that. Then you have generic marks, aspirin. Aspirin is a trademark of buyer. All of us assume it to be acetyl salicylic acid. <coughs> Go to the chemist and he gives you aspirin. You go and ask for a crossin. Anybody will give you paracetamol and you will accept it. All of go to the stationery shop, say, give me a cellophane. The fellow gives us a transfer and fill in. We do not bother what make it is. Cellophane is a trademark of Eastman Chemical Company. It is cellulose triacetate, the name of the film is, say, chemically. So, from there, the cellophane. And today, all of us go and say, give me a cellophane. Any transplant film he gives and we do not look whether it is a cellophane or not, what name it is. So, these are protected trademarks, were protected, but became very generic through the consumer use. Those trademarks have a lowest strength. Today, cellophane has no value as a trademark, become very generic. So, this is what we call as a generic side. The mark is originally distinctive, protectable, but becomes over the time generic. Very often this happens to most of the successful trades. I do not know how many of you know Dalda. Dalda is a Unilever product, hydrogenated fat. People went to the shop and said, give me Dalda. Anybody gave you any heterogeneated fat and you bought it. So, any heterogeneous fat was called Dalda. Nobody bothered whether you are getting a Unilever Dalda or not. Let us take Xerox. How many times you say go and get a Xerox copy? 
Xerox is a trademark of Xerox Corporation. We do not use the word photocopy. This I get two Xerox copies. Go to any shop, yellow board and Xerox. He is not a Xerox franchisee. You go inside the shop, there is a Minolta machine on which he is doing photocopies. Sharp machine on which he is doing photocopies. What is board says Xerox. He has nothing to do with Xerox company. But all of us assume that he is a photocopy shop and he is doing photocopies. Xerox got worried one day, he it is becoming a January site. So, they chose a day one day, all the newspapers of the world, front page they bought and it said, we are not Xerox, we are a document management company, that is it, the message said. Basically, they want to say distinguish our trademark based on what activities we are doing. We do something beyond a photocopy. Then there is a concept of a trade dress. You have a trademark, distillery, so this is a bottle, this is a design, this is a green color. This whole thing constitutes a trade dress. This one is a trademark. But how this whole package looks like, the way the shape is, the combination of colors is, all this put together is constitutes a trade dress. And very often competitors infringe this. Number of time, you will get the products. Similar looking, the bislary misspelled. I have a slide which unfortunately I have not put here. This bislary is spelled in five different ways. Instead of B I, it is B E, and where there is E, there is I. Bislary, baslary, and all that kind of, and everything exactly the same. I have recently seen milk packet, exactly same as Amul. That the girl, blue color, everything same. Instead of A M U L, it is written A N U L. Anul. Nothing is different. And you go to the shop, say, give me Amul. The fellow gives you package. You don't bother, you know. Because exactly the same girl is there, same blue color is there, the red marking is there. Pouch exactly the same. And you buy it up. And then you tear it up, use the milk. You don't. Lick because your thought does not go because what you are looking is a trade dress. Go to rural area, same thing happens to Vicks, same thing happens to Iodex. One word misspelled, rest everything remains the same <coughs> and customer does not come. This has happened to me in Gangtok. I go to a chemist shop and ask for a medicine. The fellow gives me a medicine. I am obviously educated fellow, I know. I will know chemical formula of the drug or everything and I am saying there is something wrong. I have a look, closer look and I realize there is a counterfeit. I shout at him. Owner hears it, comes running to the counter. Sab kya ho gaya? Mera ab kya de rahe? Dil ni sab uska galti ho gaya sunne mein and gives me the real script. Now okay, I am educated fellow but not everybody is educated to distinguish between them. There is a trademark owners association, they have office in port. You get into the reception, the whole cupboard is full of all those counterfeit products. Whether it is Colgate paste, anything and you will not be able to distinguish unless you have a closer look. So, it is a total image and overall appearance is registered as a trade dress. And you can sue people for the trade dress infringement. There are a lot of cases like that where they are sued. But then we are going beyond a trademark, full trade dress. Trademarks obviously are protected under the national law. Each country has a trademark act. Again, 
unlike a patent where you have to register and through an examination process you grant and then you can protect it. Trademarks come into being through an actual use. You start using your <coughs> trademark. Pardon? Yes, ah, generic side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. I will repeat this question. Yeah. Noodles. Yeah. Yeah, but now you have to wait over a period of time, then it becomes a genericide. Which means the product has still, then Maggie has not become a genericide yet. Time will come when. Maggie will become synonymous with noodles. Anybody goes to the shop and say, give me Maggie and the fellow will give you in Patanjali noodles, you will accept it. So, you have to reach that stage in time where it becomes a genericide. Cellophane and aspirin, it is 100 years. Also, it depends on the product. Photocopying is so common, although photocopying is only, you can say, 50 years, but it has evolved. The earliest photocopying you have not seen, you know it used to be a frame, you used to take a picture, you put the granules, shake it on that image which was there on the plate, it will stick, that plate you again put it back and that will get, what is sticks, that powder will get transferred to the paper, that was the technology, first generation technology. It has evolved over a period of time, so Xerox has become because is too commonly photocopying, you know. So, Maggie is still not a generic. We associate with the noodles, but when you are asking for Maggie, you are asking for Maggie. But period of time, it will become so generic that you will refuse, means you will not distinguish. You will ask for a noodles, you will say Maggie and the fellow will give you some noodle packet and you will accept it. But then also comes, how do you over a period of time, do a product differentiation. You keep on doing product differentiation and keep on emphasizing branding, advertising, in the mind that association will come. For photocopying what happens, you can't distinguish, it is just a photocopy, you know. So that product differentiation of the photocopy is not there. Actually you will get surprised, all these guys do not use official toners, they use refills which are given by the local fellow, all these shops. <coughs> Office inside IIT may be using an official, you know, toner, but outside it is all, you know, grey market, but still we go and get it from there. Because we, for us it is transitory, your photocopy liya, office mm -hmm. delivery, that is for us. So, you do not have to resist a trademark to have it protected, but you do it for a couple of reasons. One, it serves as a constructive mark to warn other people that you own it, that you are the owner. Second is, it gives you that exclusive right and third, when you go to the court, it serves as a legal document of ownership. Therefore, it gets protected. How do you do it? First, obviously, there is a national route. Each country where you want to seek protection, you can file, go through a process and get it. Otherwise, there is a regional route. There are a group of countries who are members of a regional trademark system, like AFRIPO, African Regional Industrial Property Office. They will register trademark there, whole of Africa it is covered. Or in European Union, what is called OHIM, Office of Harmonization of the Internal Market. Now, if you register under the OHIM, whole of the Europe, your trademark is registered. Then there is an international route, there is an international agreement called Madrid Agreement, which is administered by WIPO. You can get a global protection against that. Again, trademark. 
there are certain formalities to be completed and we are signatory to the Madrid system. We became signatory only some 6, 7 years ago. So, whatever the trademark is registered in India is now globally can be protected. We talked about the period of protection in patent 20 years from the date of grant. Trademark does not have that limitation. It can be indefinitely protected subject to timely renewal. You get it 10 years at a time, you keep on running, as long as you keep on running in a timely manner, you can have. There are trademarks which are more than 200 year old, DuPont, more than 200 year old. In the life of the company and it's still there, G, 150 years old. So, there are trademarks which have been so long. So, therefore, the strength of trademark as an IP right is very high because it is indefinite, it does not expire. So, if you have a trademark, you must actively use it whenever you are offering goods and services. I have seen organization, including my organization, we have trademark registered, but we do not use it on the products and services. We talked about patent information, database, etc., and we have a trademark called PAT state. This is a trademark, but we do not use it. So, you must actively use trademark because when you apply for registration, and if there is any similarity dispute, you have to show that it has been in use. Longer it has been used, the stronger your case. And you must affix that mark to goods are their packaging, box, your letterheads, your advertisement, your visiting cards, whatever catalog, brochures, when you are trading, importing, exporting, use that mark and use that mark as a business asset, it's not necessarily trademark is used by people who actively trade in those goods or services. People only have a trademark and they build that brand and they use that as a business asset. Let us look at few examples. You license your trademark. You retain the ownership but allow others to use the trademark in exchange of royalties. All of us know McDowell is spirits company. You be good. They are not in the mineral water business, <coughs> but they have licensed McDowell for the mineral water. You will very often find McDowell mineral water bottles done by local producer. You will look at the label, it says manufactured by XYZ Nasik and trademark license from UB Group. So, UB group is in cashing that, charging them royalty to use that. Number of products. I told you other day, Videocon sells all these consumer electronics, Philips. They are not Philips products, they are Videocon products. Philips is licensed in the name. So, a lot of companies do this. I was recently surprised in Pune, there is a Paranjpe builders. They were the first one to start a senior citizen scheme called Athashri. They half a dozen Athashri scheme, they became very popular. And I now saw some other builder with a scheme and Athashri. And I find Paranjpe permitting to use Athashri and having some management contract. And Paranjpe has nothing to do with the building that is some other builder. So, number of people are doing. Now, Paranj is a small guy. Restricted to Pune, little Bangalore and recently they have started Athashri scheme in Baroda. He is not a very big group at all. But because they were pioneers in doing that Pune, then Athashri has got associated with Paranj. They are in cashing that word Athashri. Franchising, which involves licensing of trademark along with the know-how to deal 
basis the way to do this. All these fast food joints McDonald's, Pizza Hut etcetera, owner is some local person, but they are allowed to use the trademark, but they have to decor, way of delivery service, procurement of raw materials or whatever finished products. Those patties will come from somewhere, those fries will come from frozen fries, they will just fry, but they pay all this for the franchising fee over and over goods. You can sell or assign trademark to another company. This happens in merger and acquisition. When Croson business was sold, two third of money was for the trademark Croson, one third was the rest of the business. All of us see that Kisan Ketchup, it was a small company called Dippies in Bombay. Through merger acquisition, it has come into the Unilever. And that Kisan name was so much that Unilever has paid for it. Unilever is selling a Kisan ketchup. So, very often when you acquire a business, please do due diligence on these aspects. In the case, a Chinese company was sold, it was a sick company, it was sold for a fancy sum. The buyer who bought it did not do due diligence. After he bought, he found out that owner has already sold out trademark and everything to other guys. And this fellow was under the assumption that when he is buying this company, he is getting everything and he thought he will encash that name and everything. But that was already sold off. So what we call is what he got was a empty coca. What will he do with that sick company? And those assets, he could no longer use that name. Sibak Binaka, I do not know how many of you remember, you, you are younger generation, the famous <coughs> toothpaste brand called Binaka, Siba Gaigi, used to have program Binaka Geek Mala, Amit Sen. Because Sibaka then changed name to Sibaka, Siba Gaigi, but Binaka brand already so much, the Binaka name was purchased. An old brand for the beverages, Socio. So recently somebody bought that old Socio brand because the old name is so famous. Another case recently somebody acquired ah, Hindustan Motor, Ambassador car, factory 6 sold off. Somebody bought that Ambassador, now that he is restarting a factory and wants the same ambassador as the EV. Because the name, brand name of ambassador is so much value. <coughs> Again, how do you enforce? Like all IP rights, it is your responsibility to identify infringement. Lot of people think that IP rights are granted by the government, so it is a government job to police. It is not a job of a government, it is your asset, you have to police. When you buy a plot of land, you put a fencing, you keep a watchman. Government registers it in your name, but it is not a job of a government. So, you, it is your responsibility to identify infringement and decide what you do. Typically, whenever you notice this, you issue them a notice, this is called cease and desist. Tell them, look. You identified an infringement. They are hereby ask you to cease your operation and desist from selling those goods. That is a standard letter which goes and it's called cease and desist letter. If guy does it, fine. If not, go to the court. Showing an evidence that it has been infringed. And court will issue what is called a search and seize order. So, police will be asked to go and search the premises of your competitor or infringer and seize whatever goods are there carrying that trademark. And then court proceeds what you seize and show it or all that. 
today trademark are all IP rights are being enforced across the world because of international agreement. You will be surprised to see custom department looking into it. Open US custom website and you will see a section on IP. You never thought ki custom people will buy bother about that. If you find there are goods coming into your country carrying your trademark, you can complain to the custom saying these are illegal goods, counterfeit goods and custom will stop at the boundary. People do this, US custom very actively does it. The case in Europe, there is a pharma exhibition, <coughs> Dr. Anji Reddy's lab had a stall there and they had put up a panel there and company was a German company, pharma company, which complained and Dr. Anji Reddy's executives who were standing at the stall were arrested. So, increasingly custom authorities are being used to prevent this and then obviously there is an arbitration method to solve it, mediation, people do not very often go and fight long cases because it is time consuming, it is spending money and sometimes what happens, the guy is your vendor, is your contractor, partner, and you want to maintain those business relations. So you settle out of court. I remember we ran a course on patent informatics. So I had put up a admission notification newspaper. I don't know what kind of a tagline I had put it, some art and science of patent searching or what I don't remember now. There's a company in US, it is the biggest company in patent analytics. They also run the course, but more than they are in analytics, they had 600 employees. Apparently, the tagline they had registered as a service mark. I was not aware. And I had issued a notice from a US lawyer. Now, I am running a course in India. Number of seats I have 30. I am teaching some 30 students, MSc pass, BD pass. It does not affect that company at all. What people enforce? Police. They issue me a notice. I am a government organization. I do not want to get into trouble because having violated somebody. All I did is from my website remove the tagline or modified the tagline. Now, those guys might have seen it, saying that okay, I have removed. It does not affect them much, so they kept quiet and I kept quiet. I did not reply. All I did is I took an action to remove the tagline or modify the tagline. Now comes domain names. This is a relatively new form of IP. It is not what I am saying in an IP right as such, but a kind of IP because today a domain name is promoted so that you can find our customers can find you on the net and each website is on distinct domain name, distinguished from other sites and very often it is closely linked to your trademark copyright name and it has become a very valuable asset. As soon as domain name came, somebody registered all Tata names in his favor, all Tata companies, all Tata products. Finally, Tatas called into that WIPO's uniform dispute name, domain name dispute resolution and got him vacated. So, cyber squirting is a major issue. You will find many people using that same website <coughs> name and all that doing. So, today more and more importance on this because there is a way to reach customers. Let us look at some cases. How many people from Delhi? Anybody from Delhi? Khan market. Remember? Khan Chacha. 
small outlet, very popular. The guy called Haji Banda Hassan, 1972 he comes to the village, hires a pigeon in the hole in the building, starts selling chicken tikka, Somali, mutton cheek kebab, and all this. Becomes very popular, <coughs> becomes a successful brand, Khan Chacha. He can tell you probably. <laughs> Now, this place was owned by a gentleman called Navneet Palra, very crafty guy. In the COVID, he was in the news. He basically, what do you say, he took a lot of this, uh, ventilators and <laughs> put it into that restaurant and doing black marketing, so he was caught. So, when leave was extended, he put some class. This Khan Chacha is a very illiterate fellow. He just signed up the leave. When these were next time expiring, this fellow put a dispute and threw him out. And Kalra continued the business from the same place as the Khanchacha. Khanchacha had nothing to do with it, but Khanchacha had acquired a reputation and Kalra continued the business. Who is the real Khanchacha? The Khanchacha is a literary fellow. He does not know what is the trademark. He never registered it as a trademark. And each city, I tell you, lot of small and medium enterprises suffer through this. They do not understand the value of trademark when they begin. Over a period of time, this happens to them. I say in Pune, in my area, there is a shop, Mithas. Now it is 20 years, I think, but he has a reputation now. Some people have started other shops putting the Mithas name in there. So, lot of small and medium enterprises do not understand value and they lose out like this. Now, Khan Chacha had to move out, went to Gurgaon along with his sons, he started rule the roles, fellow became famous again, he is back to the Khan market, next to Khan Chacha. The case between Glaxo and Dabur. Glaxo sells that Glucon D. You see that packaging. Now, I could not find out Dabur had a packaging in 2003. Exactly similar. Putting glucose D. So, Glucon D has a family of 3, Dabur putting family of 4, and same kind of packaging with glucose D. Glaxo obviously took them to the court and Dabur said, no, no, ours is different, glucose D is more generic name, so this and all that. But then court said, look, <coughs> their packaging is similar, the name is phonetically similar, you are infringer. By the time the case was going, Dabur changed the packaging and said, look, our packaging is different. <laughs> Same thing happened between Gluvita and Glucovita, corn products versus Shangri-La. <coughs> corn products used to say Glucovita, there is a D-glucose plus a vitamins and Shangri-La started Gluvita. Again, same story, they fought, again court said, look, phonetically similar, consumer can get misled that both the products are same. So, corn products won and Shangri-La had to lose. Tabla roll, famous chocolate, triangular chocolate. The shape is registered as a trademark. So, you can't have any triangular chocolate. Founded is a British company. Instead of that single, they made it double and started selling products. Tabla roll took them to the court. Obviously, Court said, look, they have registered a single triangle. You can't put in a double triangle and say it will cause confusion because they are associated with the triangular chocolate. So, founder had to stop. So, you will find triangular chocolate worldwide only, double on nothing else. So, today shape can be registered at it. 
Cadbury vessel Nestle, two giants in the chocolate market, they keep on fighting continuously. They are at each other's throat. Smallest of small thing, they just keep on seeing each other. Cadbury wants to monopolize purple color and they put up an application because color also can register. They said purple color registration. A lot of fight court says you can't monopolize purple color. Anybody can use purple color for anything. So, we will not grant you that protection. And Cadbury goes and fights for the Kit Kat, those four fingers. They do not want four fingers to be given to Nestle. But Nestle has won that. So, four finger as a shape is reduced for Nestle. The German company, Ritter Sport, maybe 90 years. So, they have this square chocolate. And this Milka guys produce square chocolate. Ritter again sues them. Initially, lower court, Ritter loses. But in the higher court says, look, they have that shape registered as a trademark, so you can't infringe. So, Milka had to stop. Look at this, Mars chocolate, all these brands, Hershey's and what not, belong to Mars chocolate. Somebody here starts a company called Mars Food Products and says it is a Mars product. He says it is my company name. Again, they fight in the court and they lose. There are many such cases. Black me, you say like me. Picnic, replace K by C. Phonetically, you will still pronounce same, picnic. Channel, you say SH, you still pronounce the channel. Nirma had come out with a cosmetic line. There are other people who came, Nima, Nimin, Nirma line, Nirma care, all kind of counterfeit duplicate products. LNT, Larson and Dobro, all of us know LNT. This guy starts saying L N, uses small n instead of and, because when you pronounce, you still pronounce LNT. In the court, he says, I am Lakshmi Narayan Trades, I am just abbreviating my name, nothing else. But when you pronounce it, still say LNT. So he loses out there. Daniel. Some textile company uses Daniel. And Daniel sues them. Their fellow says they are a cigarette company. But luckily for Daniel, in UK they have one textile mill. So they say we are in textile business. Let us. All of you are aware of Delhi public schools, the school, DPS schools everywhere. Now there is a management team fighting. Now this management team guys, people who are fighting are not there really in the driver's seat. They are active in the alumni association. So they start the DPS World Foundation and start opening the schools under the DPS World Foundation. Now both are using word DPS. Now this public school is now fighting their own alumni association, saying you are taking a free ride on our reputation or DPS. So you will see very often in the beginning of the academic year some notice by DPS public schools saying these guys are fake guys, we are the real DPS, you know, that kind of thing. There is still fighting in the case. This judgment is not out. So, number of such cases you will see. So, when you are starting a business, startup, start making an investment in a trade. First, conduct a good search. You will get shocked if I tell you every name you can think of, you will find it is trademark. I have had a case where we have taken more than two months to find the words and found everything is trademark. 
even a synthesized word we have found. Finally, we zero down and conduct what is called a similarity search and that said there is a 30 percent similarity still. And looking at all ways and cons, pros and cons, we have gone ahead and registered that thinking that we will be able to fight out that 30 percent similarity which talks about. You will get shocked. I have gone through the exercise. Any name you think of and run a search into international trademark databases and you will find it. When you begin, protect the word mark first. What are the name you are, word you are thinking? Forget about graphics, this, that. Just quickly go and protect the word mark so that nobody catches that word first. And ensure that you meet the legal requirement under the trademark act. <coughs> All of us very often get emotional with the name we think. Sometimes it is a family name, sometimes a product name, or some feature name. We are very emotional about it and we want to do it. But the search will show you that those are not available. So be realistic. Don't hang on to it. People just because emotion. Just start. Registration, etc., they will do later. They will make packaging, they will make the product, they will start selling. And people will think, let me register international. Don't do it. It is an expensive proposition. You may have international ambition, but start nationally. As your business grows, then think of expanding to the international market. Police your trademark prudently. I told you, those guys issue me a notice. My 30 students are not going to affect them at all. But that is policy. Today you get tools, even to search on the internet. Similarly, founding names, etc., they come up. actively manage growth of your startup as you grow not only your first name maybe then product names because you may have a number of products you may have a product you may have a service so most important is respect the right of others in ip field if you don't respect others others are not going to respect and if you go to the court and court sees that you are yourself infringer, court doesn't look at favorability. Court looks, you are like anybody else, so why are you complaining if others are doing this to you? But if you can show that you respect everybody's right, you stand in good chance of winning your case. We'll stop here. Any question, comments on the trademark? In IIT, Techfest is a registered trademark. A long time ago, the gentleman Dean was there, Surin Arand, and we found Mood Indigo. Some other institute put Mood Indigo name. I said, look, you guys need to protect. So, Techfest was protected. So, IIT does have now few those names protected as a trademark. IIT again does not enforce it, but need to enforce. I know people do use Texas, some other engineering college word. <laughs> yeah. See, if that previous trademark is still valid, you are still infringer. Ah, but then it comes into existence by use. They can still sue you. By showing that they have been exist for 100 years and they have been using it. So, as I said, trademark comes into existence by usage. You do not have to legally register it. 
you do legal registration to get advantage to ownership. But if I have been using for 100 years and people know me in the market, I have a right. I can still see it. I don't need to prove my ownership. There is it. I have a case now. Really, my lawyer is saying, show me last five years invoices. Our letter heads on which I have given quotations. So he will show that it is in usage. Question, comment. Everything is clear. Yeah. See, in India, resisting a trademark may take you about twenty-five thousand or so, unless it is highly litigated. In a straightforward case, one or two hearing, the lawyer will charge you about twenty-five thousand rupees. Lawyer, in a sense, we call them as a patent agent. See, these people pass through an exam of the uh, government. So, they are authorized to practice before the controller of patents. You can fight your case. You do not have to necessarily hire. But what happens? You do not know the case law. So, how do you go and argue? What are the previous cases, decisions? So, it is better to take a help of a professional, you know. The Indian code, you can go and fight your own case, but then you must study so much and all that. Now, you are a startup, you have a lot of other work to do, you are going to spend time in, you know, studying all the case law, etc. for 25,000 rupees worth it. As a technical person, you know a better job other than, you know, for 25,000 do it. You do not necessarily require, you can pursue your own case, but better go to a profession. I am saying for a trademark about 25,000 rupees. I will suggest first your company name you register because that you can irrespective of the individual product name that you can always use on all the products. So, at least that gets protected. Once you have product which becomes successful then you name that product, create another trademark for that. That is how you grow you know. Yes, there is a trademark database was there. WIPO has a trademark database which you can search. Yes, yes, WIPO database is successful. Yeah. Maybe I will send you on Moodle some where, where to search for it. Sure, sure, I will do that. So, the business is all of them. See what happens in the rural market you go. So, all these people are not in urban market. All these counterfeit what you see, bislery, etc. They are coming, how the bislery goes after them. What I am saying, bislery does go after them. It sues them, takes them to the court. So, what this guy do, I tell you. They will close one brand and open another brand. So, bislery constantly chasing them. This is what happens. So, all the consumer products, there is active surveillance and fighting going on. But there are cases, they are not a consumer product. You wonder, let us say Lacoste. So, Lacoste, popular premium brand. Now, you get counterfeit good in some Chor Bazaar, 200 rupees t shirt. And Lacoste knows. The guy who is buying 200 rupees t shirt is not my customer. He is unlikely to buy 2000 rupees t shirt. So, Lacoste meet, will not go every of those fellows because it is not worthwhile fighting him. It, those customers will not come to them even if that fellow is shut down. So, that call as a manufacturer you take what effect it has on my business, whether it is worth fighting a battle or not.
yeah, Moody Nico is still has a value. Is said, but it's still a value. I mean, IIT, if decides to sue somebody, IIT can and IIT will win. By usage, it will show we have been using for 25 years. Huh. Uh -huh. Means if you acquire that reputation, it comes into common usage, you can still go and sue. But it always helps to have a legal document of ownership. And you also give notice to others, ki, look, it is registered, I am the owner. So, people are a little cautious. When it is not registered, people say, let me take a free ride and see what happens. Yeah. No, I am saying I will put it on the noodle, those resources, where you can search. No, it will, see it will look at the name and registered names and what your name and say what is the level of similarity, 70 percent similarity, 30 percent similarity. It does not further say anything, you know. Ah, that is phonetically similar. So, because channel or channel, you perform say the channel only, you know. That is correct. So, what will take the dictionary is one answer. No, like C H A N L is pronounced as Chanel. Ah, but uh, the real pronunciation is as a known in the trade is that, no? So they will go by that. I do not think such a software is there, that not to my knowledge, but I can find out for you. I do not think such a, only it looks at the word similarity, you know, what I am talking I will stop here. Any question, comments? So, Monday we will cover copyright, another of those rights. <laughs> <laughs>